In this lesson, we are going to cover all 19 question types that you will see on the Duolingo English test. The DET is structured as five sections. We are going to start with the first section, Initial Comprehension, which has two question types. The first is Read and Select, and you will see 15 to 18 questions of this kind. You will be given a word, and you have to say whether it's a real English word or not. Next is fill in the blanks, and you will see this question type six to nine times. You will be given a sentence, and one word will be missing letters. You have to fill in the missing letters. Next, you will move on to the comprehension section, and there are three question types in this section. First is read and complete. You will see this question type three to six times. You will be given a paragraph and several words will be missing letters. You have to fill in the missing letters for all of the words. This question type is very similar to fill in the blanks. The difference is that there are more words that you have to complete in the read and complete question. In the fill in the blanks question, there's just one sentence with one word. Next is read aloud, which appears three to six times. You will be given a statement and you have to record yourself saying that statement out loud. For all speaking questions on the Duolingo English test, you can only record yourself one time. Next is listen and type, which appears six to nine times. You will be given a statement that is in a recording and you have to type out what you hear. You can listen to the recording up to three times. The next section is interactive comprehension. This section is a little more complicated than the others, so be sure to pay attention. First, you will have interactive reading. An interactive reading consists of two sets of six questions each. And within each set, there are five question types. The interactive reading section gives you a passage to work with. The first step is you need to fill in the words that are missing from the passage. This is the complete the sentences question type. After you complete the sentences, you will be given another portion of the text, but a part in the middle will be missing. And in the complete the passage question type, you will have to fill in the missing sentence. Next, you will be asked a question and you have to highlight the answer from the text. Then you have to identify the main idea of the passage. And finally, you have to select the most appropriate title for the passage. Next, you will have interactive listening. Like interactive reading, you will have two sets of six questions, but in each set, there are only two question types. Interactive listening simulates a conversation with another person. So each interactive listening set of questions begins with an explanation of why you are talking to somebody. In this example, you want to know if your friend is also planning on going to a review session this week with the professor, since you are both struggling in the class. You will then answer a number of listen and respond questions. The other person will say something and then you have to pick the best response. Note that you will only be able to listen to what the other person says one time. If you get something wrong, don't worry because Duolingo will tell you the right answer so that you can still follow the conversation. After you have answered all of the listen and respond questions, you will then move on to the summarize the conversation question. You will have 75 seconds to simply summarize the conversation that you just had. This is why Duolingo tells you what the correct answer is so that you have all the information you need to do well on this question. The next section of the test is the production section. These are the writing and speaking questions. By the way, you may have noticed that production has a typo that's Duolingo's fault, not ours. You have write about the photo, which you will see three times. You will be given a photo 
and you simply have to describe it for up to one minute. Next is interactive writing. This question type appears just one time. You will be given one topic and you need to write about it for up to five minutes. Once those five minutes are up, you will be given a second prompt and you have to respond to it for three minutes. The second prompt is related to the first prompt in some way. So in this example, the first prompt was, freelance artists make a living by independently selling their art and artistic skills rather than working for a company. What are some pros and cons of this career option? Include specific reasons in your answer. So after I responded to that prompt for five minutes, I was then given the second prompt, which was, how might being a freelance artist affect one's exposure and recognition in the art community? Explain how this could be a pro or con of this career choice. There's also listen then speak, which appears twice. You will be given a topic, which you have to listen to in a recording, and you will have 90 seconds to respond to it. Remember, for speaking questions like this, you can only record yourself one time. Speak about the photo appears one time. You will be given an image and you need to speak about it for 90 seconds. Read then speak also appears just once. You will be given a topic which is written out and you need to respond to it for 90 seconds. The final section of the test are the shared question types. Why this section is called shared is that your responses to these last two questions will be sent along with your scores so that the recipients can evaluate your English for themselves. First is the writing sample and you'll only see it once. You will be given a topic and you need to write about it for up to five minutes. Finally is the speaking sample, which also appears just one time. You will be given another topic and you need to speak about it for up to three minutes. Those are all the question types that you will see on the Duolingo English test. That's it for today's lesson. I'll see you next time.